As time goes on, more and more natural diamonds will be discovered by people all over the world. But did you know that you could be one of them? Well, if you found a rough diamond in nature, you probably wouldn't know how to recognize it because rough diamonds are very different from the cut stones we're used to seeing around us. So don't throw away that ugly rough stone you found lying around. It could be worth more than you think. But first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had the opportunity to see a rough diamond in person? Unfortunately, most people have never had the opportunity to hold a rough diamond in their hands and see its natural characteristics up close. But surely you've seen a cut diamond on display in one of those beautiful, highly coveted pieces of jewelry full of sparkling stones that are sold in jewelry stores. But before we get into the details, it's important to note that a rough diamond is very different from a cut diamond. If you've watched our previous videos, you already know the main signs of diamond presence in a region. But what about after you've seen the signs? Well, if you're lucky enough to find one in nature, you need to know what diamonds look like in their raw form, right? And to get you off to a good start, let's explore all the possible shapes that diamonds can take in their raw state. That way, when you have a diamond find, you won't be in any doubt. So pay close attention because the information in this video could change your financial life forever if you find a diamond out there. Because as I always say, if you've ever thought about winning the lottery, you should know that it's easier in terms of probability to find a rare diamond worth millions of dollars than it is to win the lottery. That's what you just heard. It may seem hard to believe or an exaggeration on my part, but just look at that giant yellow diamond that is now appearing on your screen. Would you believe me if I told you that this diamond was found in the wild by a little girl playing in the ruins of an abandoned mine? Well, after finding this huge stone, the little girl decided to give it to her uncle, who thought it was too big to be a diamond and, due to his lack of knowledge, ended up selling it for a very low price. But to cut a long story short, today this beautiful golden diamond is worth millions of dollars, which would have probably guaranteed a good education for the little girl and a retirement for her uncle. And this case is not the only one. There are many such cases out there, and I hope you won't be the next one. Because if you like gems and diamonds, pay attention because after this video, you'll see the world in a different way. The first thing you need to know is that the shape of the diamond in its raw state is directly related to its formation process. And a diamond with the right shape can be very valuable because of the use made of the gemstone when it is cut. If you've been following the videos on our channel, You've probably learned that diamonds are formed deep in the earth in a region with high enough pressure and temperature to crystallize the carbon that forms diamonds in this process. Right now, this region of the earth's mantle is full of diamonds of all sizes and qualities. But unfortunately, we haven't developed the technology to go down there and get them. So we have to hope that nature itself will be kind enough to bring some of these gems to the surface through super volcanic eruptions. And often, some diamonds are big, some are small, and so on. But why is that? Well, because the pressure and temperature conditions in the Earth's mantle are volatile, diamonds form in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. And this is where it gets interesting, because here you'll see how to identify each of these characteristics. Every mineral in its raw form has a different crystalline shape, which is how the stone develops during crystallization, according to its chemical composition. In other words, the formation of crystals happens according to the material it is made of. In the case of diamond, this formation takes place in a cubic pattern. It gets its name from the way the carbon molecules are organized to form the diamond crystal. And look how interesting that is. You probably learned in school that the graphite used in pencils is made of the same material as diamond carbon. But if they are the same, what makes graphite different from diamond? Why does one cost millions of dollars and the other pennies? Well, the main difference is not in the chemical composition, but in the structural organization of the carbon molecules. This is why you may have already noticed that graphite is a soft and fragile material, while diamond is super hard and tough, even though they are both made of the same stuff. Now that we know this, we come to the first form of diamond crystallization, the octahedron. This is the most common structure found in rough diamonds. This type of diamond looks like two pyramids joined together. It resembles the shape of a diamond with one end up and the other end down. But the diamond is not the only one with these characteristics. There are other stones that also have this same form of crystallization. But despite this, we have the case of quartz and corundum can be found in similar shapes. 
confusing many inexperienced people out there who believe they have found a colored diamond. And in case you don't know, corundum are rubies and sapphires. Rubies for the reddish stones and sapphires for the other colors. However, you may notice that rubies and sapphires are more dull and opaque. But regardless, if you are lucky enough to find them in nature, you should know that they are also highly prized stones. And now you can find the same form of crystallization in magnetite and fluorite. These are two very different stones and much more fragile than a diamond, but they are also a great find. This pawn shape, as prospectors call it, can be cut in half to produce two pieces of almost equal size. Octahedron rough diamonds are most easily found in brown. Diamonds of this shape are even found in some regions here in the United States. There was even a Frenchman named Julian Navas who found a 7.46 carat diamond in the Crater of Diamonds State Park in Murfreesboro, Arkansas. So if you've ever seen a pebble with this shape and ignored it, know that you may have missed a golden opportunity, I mean a diamond. At first, you may find it difficult to identify a diamond, but after a while, you will. You'll start to notice the differences and realize that there are some very unique details. What's more, there are various tests you can do to identify any type of gem you find in your area. And you can learn how to do these tests using our digital gemology book, which is available at the first link in the description of this video. But moving on, the next shape is the round diamond. What do you think? Can a diamond be round? When I was a beginner and saw one for the first time, I almost doubted that it was a diamond. In my opinion, this is by far the most curious shape of diamond. If you look closely, you'll see that they have almost no face but they're not perfect little spheres. They are full of little imperfections. They usually look like this because of the wear and tear they suffer over time. But don't confuse round diamonds with the white spheres that some people insist are diamonds. Diamonds are very hard and cannot be found rolled in nature. Rough diamond stones will always have small imperfections and inclusions, which is quite different from the white spheres of rolled river stones, which have nothing to do with diamonds. However, don't dismiss rolled river stones out of hand, as we talked about in the previous video. It's worth remembering that they also have their value and can be sold for great prices. So don't confuse them. There are round diamonds. They are small and imperfect as you see them now. They are not perfect little spheres. They also retain their high brilliance. Just like the next diamond shape we can find, the dodecahedron. I don't know about you, but some people find that name strange. So let us know in the comments what country you're watching from. And if you find that name strange too, because usually this shape is flatter and has a diamond shape at the top of the stone, just take a look at what it looks like. You could say that dodecahedrons are a slightly modified version of the diamond octahedron, which is the most common shape and sometimes looks almost like a balloon. They have an average of 12 sides that are nearly equal. In some cases, they can appear semispherical. In other cases, they can have from 12 to 24 faces. This shape of diamond crystal is quite common in African quarries. It is the most popular diamond shape among jewelers and is considered the favorite for cutting because you can make several stones and get a lot out of them when cutting. Cubic diamonds, on the other hand, are usually opaque in color. They are usually found in different colors such as yellow, red, green, orange, and even brown. Cubic diamonds look a lot like very small cubes with a very peculiar appearance. It doesn't even look like a diamond. You wouldn't think that such a stone would actually be a diamond, which is a very rare shape. And because of the internal structure of these cubes, it is not a good gem to cut. That's why these stones are classified as exclusive gemstones in their raw state. Imagine walking through nature and finding a diamond like this. It's like a dice. Have you ever thought how unfortunate it would be to find one of these and not even imagine that it could be a diamond? And the best part is that this kind of diamond doesn't even need to be cut to be worth millions. But in my opinion, the most beautiful shape of diamonds are the triangular ones. These are rough diamonds, often called makals. They are flat and clear. They have a triangular shape with several smaller triangle designs on their surface. This type of diamond is one of the rare occurrences of diamonds that are formed due to a growth process deep inside the earth. In this case, it can be a challenge to cut such a stone, both to make a piece of jewelry with a desirable shape and to give it the ideal number of facets so that we have an ideal refraction number for a diamond. Some of them are so perfect that they look like they've already been cut, like the one on your screen right now. Now pay attention. Unlike the geometric shapes we've already mentioned, which are very characteristic, you can also find completely irregular shapes or ones that have been broken in nature for random reasons. 
They can be as smooth as a highly polished stone. These smooth diamonds may have started out in a different shape, but through rolling around in rivers, friction, and strong impacts with other stones, they end up naturally semi-polished. This is common in good quality rough diamonds. They can also have a higher brilliance than any other stone found in the rough. These types of diamonds with somewhat random shapes can be found in alluvial fans, which are basically the places where river gravel has accumulated over millions of years to form a small canyon along the banks of rivers. And here's a secret. You can find alluvial fans in places that were once dry rivers thousands or even millions of years ago. As the water has gone by, the gravel carried by the current can form a little hill and there will be traces of some of the river water that passed through the area. So when we find pebbles, it doesn't always mean that they came from a current river. They may have come from a river that existed a long time ago and no longer exists. Oh, and to top it off, here on the channel, there are two videos for you to learn how to analyze areas, as well as the tests you can do at home to find out if you've already found a diamond there and don't even know it. This is because when a diamond has an irregular shape, we need to analyze the other characteristics to make the most confident identification. In fact, many of the diamonds found in the United States come from alluvial fans and ancient rivers. If you can, watch this video more than once, because one thing's for sure. If you're out collecting pebbles one day, and you come across a large, good quality diamond, it could be like hitting the lottery. A lot of people find a beautiful crystalline pebble out there and wonder if it might be a diamond because they know that not all diamonds are as crystalline as glass or crystal. So if you still don't know or are not familiar with the type of stone, I recommend that you keep watching our videos here on the channel and if possible, buy the Gemology for Beginners book while it is still available and start identifying the stones you find in nature. Even if you've just happened to find a beautiful stone on the ground or by a river and wondered, can I make money by selling this stone? Yes, you can. Just watch the video below or access our gemstone book by clicking on the first link in the description. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, gem hunters.